Today is the end of November and in just a few days we're going to see a new class of drone enter the market, a 360 drone. Anti-Gravity are about to release their A1, what they say is the world's first 360 drone based around Insta360 technology and rumours are DJI are soon to release what is called an Avata 360 lightly based on their Osmo 360. Now, both of these drones look incredibly interesting and like me, many people are excited to go out and try these. However, before spending your money, if you've never used a 360 camera before, there are a few things you need to be aware of, especially compared to flying or using a normal camera like you may have on the likes of the DJI Mini 5 Pro. In this video, I'm going to give you a technical overview of the differences between a standard camera and a camera in a 360 drone and explain exactly what the manufacturers are doing to give you that 360 image and why that often doesn't give you the same levels of image quality or resolution as you would have on a standard camera drone. More than anything I want to share a little bit of a warning with this as well that don't run out and buy these and instantly expect them to offer the same image quality on a standard camera drone because there are compromises to forcing in a large fisheye type image. Now, as for these new drones that are releasing, I don't have any of these. It's quite interesting that they're both FPV centric products. Both are going to be using FPV goggles and I will talk about that a bit more at the end of the video. However, I will be buying these drones when they release and when they do come out, I'll make content and explain things around the products itself in a little bit more detail. Anyway, let's get on with today's video and talk about why 360 cameras are often a disappointment to people when they use them for the first time. When it comes to the current crop of cameras on drones, they pretty much work exactly the same as a normal camera. However, they usually do have a few compromises. That being, they usually have a fixed lens, they usually don't have an aperture. However, the basic main principles apply. You have a lens and a camera sensor. Whilst most drones and action cameras all have these fixed lenses, they do still work on the same principles as a standard camera in that you have a lens that captures the image through the front. That then is projected onto the sensor inside the camera. The sensors are made up of lots of little pixels that are designed to capture the light being projected on it from the lens. Most sensors are designed around a standard configuration known as a Bayer configuration, although there are other types of sensors available on the market. And this setup is what has become the standard in video and photography today. Now, depending on the camera type and its designed use case, they will usually have a field of view equivalent of between 10 and 24 millimeters. So for instance, action cameras tend to have a wider field of view down to the 10, 12 millimeter range. FPV drones, something similar, whereas something like your camera drone, your mini series, may be in the 20 to 24 millimeter range. When it comes to capturing 360 imagery though, things are a little bit different. Not only do you need more than one camera, you also need extremely wide angle lenses or what are known as fisheye lenses. These allow the camera to actually pick up a massive field of view around it and then the software in the camera actually stitches the two images together from the cameras to give you that 360 image. As a result of those very wide angle lenses, there are compromises in the way the footage is captured. And even though these cameras can have the same megapixel and size sensors as a normal camera, it doesn't mean it's going to produce the same kind of image. In a normal camera, your lens projects a circular image over the top of the sensor. This image is actually larger than the sensor itself. And what you see is the rectangular bit in the middle that is captured by your sensor. The thing to understand in a normal camera is that it projects the image over the whole sensor and you capture the bit that the sensor is able to see. And this is what gives you your field of view. Changing your lens will obviously change your field of view, but the fundamental remains that the sensor is entirely covered by the image that is projected over the top. And the benefit of this is that you're able to capture your image at the full resolution the sensor is capable of. 
One of the big benefits in detail that modern cameras have is their ability to sample the whole sensor and not just the sensor area for the resolution you've chosen. For instance, a 4K video is actually around 8.3 megapixel, whereas your sensor might be 12 megapixel. Rather than just taking that 8.3 megapixel window in the middle, modern cameras sample the whole sensor and downscale the output to the desired resolution. The benefit of doing this is that you actually get more detail in the image without losing any field of view, and this is another way of improving the detail that your camera is able to provide. When it comes to 360 cameras though, things are a little bit different. Not only is it trying to capture a much bigger field of view, it is also projecting that onto the sensor differently as well. These cameras use an extremely wide angle fisheye lens and can use either a square or a rectangular sensor. The difference though is how the image from that lens is actually projected onto that sensor. As an example, here is a quad Bayer square sensor as used in the DJI Osmo 360. As I showed earlier on a standard camera, the image is projected over the whole sensor area, and if you're reducing that down to a lower resolution, they still in many cases sample the whole sensor rather than just the resolution that you're outputting. However, on a 360 camera, it is different. First of all, the image is projected onto the sensor as a circle, and whilst it does take up a very large area of the sensor, there are parts of the sensor that are not used, as you can see around the sides. Further to this, because you're projecting a lot more image detail, you are not taking that full sensor sample and downscaling that to your chosen resolution, because all of that extra sensor area is taken up by the additional image detail as a result of that big fisheye lens. Further to this, the actual image output you're getting is half the resolution of the total camera specification because they're taking the image from two sensors and then combining that together to make up that 360 degree image. And even though these cameras may label themselves with resolutions such as 8K, take into account that that is including both sensors and not just one. So for instance, the DJI Osmo 360 can do 4K off each one, which combined together gives that 8K resolution. When it comes to resolution, there are also some big gotchas that you need to take into account with a 360 camera as well. People often state that 360 doesn't have the same resolution of a normal camera, and that is correct, but that isn't because of any fault of the camera. It is simply because of the kind of image you're trying to capture. For instance, as I showed earlier, on a standard camera, you're getting that full image from the lens being projected over the whole sensor. That, though, is only within the field of view the lens is providing. On the 360, camera, you're trying to jam in 180 degrees on each side into that sensor. As a result of that, you're forcing a lot more image data in, so when you zoom right out, you have that massive field of view. However, when you crop in to try and get a normal field of view, you're basically software zooming, and as a result of that, you have a much lower resolution available than you would have even on the likes of a standard action camera. And whilst people complain about this and say 360 cameras have much lower resolution, it's not that it's a resolution problem, it's that you're trying to cram a much larger field of view into the overall same size and megapixel sensor that we're using on an action camera, and then trying to software zoom in and crop in without having any of the benefits that I mentioned earlier on a standard camera, where it can actually take the whole sensor of data and then downscale that to the desired output. This is having to use all of that sensor area to cram in that full fisheye image, whereas this one is able to benefit from that additional sensor area and then sample that image out at a lower resolution whilst retaining the detail. It's also worth noting, even if the camera has a feature like this Osmo 360 called single lens mode, it may try and behave more like a traditional action camera, but you are still putting the same field of view through the same lens to the same sensor, and as a result of it, you have the same compromises. 
just demonstrating the single lens mode on the Osmo 360 on the right compared to the Action 4 on the left. I've zoomed these images in to give you the same field of view and you can see that there is a lot more detail in the left hand image from the Action 4 than there is in the Osmo 360 even though they are technically recording at the same resolution. Even though these cameras may be using high pixel density sensors, the fundamentals remain that you are trying to cram in a very large field of view into a smaller sensor space than you would on a normal camera. And as a result of that, when you try and crop that into a normal usable image, you see a reduction in resolution. One other thing around resolution that I should just touch on is quad bayer now i'm not going to get into that too deeply in this video i've actually already filmed a separate video on that subject however i should just be clear in saying when i am talking about resolution i am talking about true resolution and not quad bayer resolution for those who don't know quad bayer is a method of splitting the pixels up in the sensor even further than they already were but he isn't true resolution what you will often find is a camera might say 12 megapixel or 48 megapixel quad bayer don't think for one moment whereas this camera may say it has a 48 megapixel sensor that is the same as a 48 megapixel sensor in a nice large sony mirrorless camera quad bayer isn't true resolution and when we're talking about resolution we are talking about native full pixel resolution and that is what you should be looking at when we are talking about these cameras and don't think that this camera with 48 megapixels is four times better than this camera with 12 the truth is a 12 megapixel standard sensor would be a 48 megapixel quad bayer but that doesn't mean it's going to have four times the actual resolution. One last thing I just want to mention on 360 cameras is editing the footage because something else you need to be aware of is the fact that these cameras will record in proprietary format. You cannot just drag the footage from a 360 camera and thus the 360 drone into your normal editing software. You are going to need to edit that footage with the software from the manufacturer. So for instance, both Insta360 and DJI have smartphone apps and they have PC apps available as well, although I will say Insta360 are leagues ahead of DJI here with regards to their software, so much so the DJI PC-based app, in my opinion, is almost unusable due to how badly it performs. When it comes to editing 360 software, when it comes to editing 360 footage, it has when it comes to editing 360 footage, it is a lot more involved than it is on standard footage simply because of you need to set the perspective, the field of view yourself, rather than that being fixed from the camera. So it is an additional step or few steps that you need to add to your workflow. Now, when it comes to these drones, we don't quite know yet how they're going to perform. But this video was a little bit of a heads up and a warning just to say you may find the image quality is not remotely what you would get on a standard drone. There is, though, some potential improvement on these drones that we don't have on the 360 cameras. For instance, on the front of the anti-gravity, we've got two cameras, and then there is the 180-degree fisheye cameras, or a little bit more, on the top and bottom, which is used to build up the image. In this situation, it is possible that anti-gravity are actually combining the image from all of these sensors, so again, this may help improve image quality, but I think it's a big ask for these cameras to offer the same out and out resolution as you would get even on the likes of a Mini 5 Pro, let alone anything like a Mavic 3, A e series or any of the others. There is always a compromise with 360 cameras and what you usually see is people say they're bad, they're not very good compared to a standard camera. It's really not the case that they're not very good. It's just understanding, as I have explained here today, the fundamental differences in what the camera is trying to do. And as a result of that, there is a compromise in the available image resolution. 
Now, as I said at the start of the video, the Insta360 A1 is going to launch on the 4th in just a few days, and then shortly afterwards, we're likely to see the DJI. And one point I just want to make in all of this is, we're obviously going to see lots of reviews. We're going to see everyone tell you just how great these products are. But more than anything, now that I've explained the difference is make sure you dig into the detail because I'm sure all of the reviewers who've been sent these will tell you the truth and I'm sure they'll tell you how good the product is as well. But the devil is always in the detail. There is always so much we don't know about these products, but don't fall into the trap like many new users of 360 cameras do of thinking it's going to look as good as a standard camera. There is always a compromise for 360 and whilst i am expecting a little bit of cleverness it may not always meet the image quality many users expect and the devil is always in the detail and hopefully you now have the information to dig in a bit more of getting footage looking at it for yourself before running out and spending this money my advice on these new products as they are going to be so new is see if you can get some raw footage for yourself and then have a look at how it looks once you've edited it before running out and spending the money and hoping that it's going to be what you expect. If you're not looking for out and out image quality, then you're going to be fine. But I can guarantee now we're going to see posts of people saying, I've bought this and it looks nowhere near as good as my DJI Mavic Mini or whatever drone they were using before. I am though really excited about both of these products, not only because of they are 360, but they are both FPV centric as well. The DJI looks to be based with the Goggles 3. I'm not aware of any new goggles coming from DJI and the Insta360 Anti-Gravity A1 is using its new own set of FPV goggles again with its love stick style remote controller. I'm hoping they release a proper remote controller for it in the future. And I have seen some image and video leaked online, which does look incredibly interesting. And this really is going to be a new standard in drones. It's nice to actually be at a point in time where something genuinely new is coming. It isn't new to put a 360 camera on a drone, but what is new is having that 360 image being streamed back to the goggles, that immersive view being able to look around in the image. I'm really excited about how Insta and DJI are going to show this in the goggles. Are you going to have a window? It looks like an Insta. There's a window in the middle with the 360 image around. Are you going to be able to look all the way around? Is the image going to be high resolution, low resolution? There is loads of really cool stuff being done just in the image transmission side of things, let alone recording. What I can tell you is on the Avata 2, it is still using 04, doesn't look particularly special. There is nothing new in the RF side of things from the FCC details. So it's gonna be interesting to see what DJI is doing in software on the goggles. We don't know on the anti-gravity side, even what their RF link is. We don't know if it's Wi-Fi. We don't know if it's a custom link could even be artisan again this is all stuff we will find out when the product launches anti-gravity are releasing next week so i'm looking forward to getting my order in and getting it on the bench we will do all of the usual stuff with it including the tear down and a deep dive so if you're interested in seeing that please do make sure you are subscribed now, if you have found this video useful, please do let me know what you think down below. If you have any questions, put them down below and I will try and answer them. And finally, if you would like to support me to be able to buy these drones, because I will not be getting one from Anti-Gravity and I certainly won't be getting one from DJI, we will be buying them through the channel. If you'd like to support us to allow us to make that happen, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buying me a coffee. It is only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us, not only to make the content we make, but also keep FPV Wiki going, upload the teardown images and information onto FPV Wiki as well. There'll be a link to that in the description. Please do consider checking both the links out. Anyway, that's it for me. Look after yourselves, stay safe, and I will speak to you soon.